Right. So, good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to this session on reservation and all related aspects, which will be taken by Advocate Shashank sir. Now, for most of you already know Shashank sir, he's been like you know on and off visible on YouTube for the last <laughs> years. But apart from that, Shashank sir is also a Supreme Court advocate who has represented you know various sides in most of the major cases, be it an EWS, be it an OBC reservation. So he knows the things in and out. He has represented the cases in the court and his arguments have won multiple cases enough. So, you know, with that basic introduction, I'll leave it to Shashank, sir. Yes. So, uh, well, uh, in this session, uh, I'll try to entail all the details with regards to eligibility and uh, reservations. Uh, but we will have our specific focus on UPSC exam because that is how... Uh, Somehow, mm -hmm. you know, we got the idea to have this session. Obviously, we'll keep it in the, the, the manners. Even others get benefited. Why not? But yes, uh, to begin with, we'll uh, uh, go through or, you know, give it a glimpse to the civil service notification, first of all. And then we'll come to the eligibility conditions with regards to reservations. Now, in reservations, obviously, there is SC, ST, OBC, EWS, and even PH. So we'll go through all the uh, reservation schemes and policies and see to it who all are eligible. That is what the uh, major question is. People are confused about certificates, few inadvertent errors, uh, errors in issuance of certificate, and also uh, in general that am I eligible or not? That is the biggest question which everybody kind of you know is confused about. So well, uh, you all must know. We all read a lot for UPSC, but uh, uh, we all should also read uh, what is called as notification. Not only to better understand the exam, sometimes, you know, uh, while uh, while talking to candidates who are giving interviews, especially in this season, uh, the first question I ask them is, have you read about what is personality test? So not only this notification is important because it gives you, it's the torch light, it's, it's that torch, which tells you how and what will be tested, how the exam is. It, is, it should be the first thing to do. Not only that, but also it entails, it describes and elaborates on who is eligible. Okay. And see the, what is the first point in the notification, by the way, it's a gazetted notification and the civil service exams is bound by rules, uh, which comes as a gazette and the exam notification is also part of it. So, uh, the exam notification comes as civil service, uh, notification, which is under the civil service rules. Okay. And the, what is what is written as the first thing is here is candidates to ensure their eligibility for the examination. Okay, so all candidates, male, female, transgenders, are requested to carefully read the rules of civil service examination notified by the government. So this is this is how it should be, and clearly what is mentioned is that the commission, commission takes a verification. Commission takes a verification of eligibility condition with reference to original documents only after the candidate is qualified interview stage. So until interview stage, as such, there is no problem. Your verification will be conducted at interview stage only. But what is the problem? What is the question? The question is that are you eligible or not? Because you cannot, you cannot be told at interview stage that you are not eligible. That will be a big shock. And that shouldn't, that should be avoided, isn't it? So we have to check our eligibility then and there before the notification, before the notification. This is the biggest mistake which lots of people do. What they do, they go, they take the OBC certificate. Now they don't know whether they're eligible or not. They get a EWA certificate and then off late they come to know, oh, they're not eligible. They get a PH certificate without knowing that 40% exactly is the disability or not. And then they come to know when at interview stage and that comes as a shock, right? So now exactly to, you know, exactly to, to understand that whether we are eligible or not, we are conducting this session because what we have noticed is there has been lots of cases happening, lots of litigation. People are also kind of students because, because of sometimes inadvertent errors, sometimes because of authorities' mistakes, certificates not being issued rightly, there are various, 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 various sorts of problems. Okay, we'll deal with each each of the things. Okay, one is the last date. Usually, 
uh, even in service law, last date, last date of any examination is always mentioned. And that date has to be the cutoff date, usually. If the cutoff date is otherwise mentioned or not. What is cutoff date? Cutoff date is the date on which you should be eligible. On which you should be eligible. So on this date, you all should be eligible. Right? So on this date, you all should be eligible. Now, coming to, then there is a list of all the services. Then there is a list of functional classifications, which, which all services have normal eligibility, which all doesn't, all of that functional, physical, classability. And then comes point three. Then comes what? Point three. Okay. Here, eligibility conditions. Who are all eligible? You should be uh, for for the three services, which is IAS, IFS, and IPS. A candidate must be a citizen of India. For other services, a candidate must be either a citizen of India or a citizen of subject of Nepal, Bhutan. It will be a surprise to all of you. Shall also be eligible. Anyways, we don't care. What we are here for? The major, the major. One of the major eligibility conditions with regards to age limit. On age limit, a candidate must have attained the age of 21 years and must not have attained the age of 32 years. On which date? Now they have mentioned a cutoff date. Cutoff date apart from the date of notification. So this is the cutoff date. On which date? On 1st August 23. That is, he must not have born earlier than 2nd August 91 and later than later than 1st August 2002. It's clearly mentioned. So age limit is very, very clear. Then, then there comes a little relaxation conditions. Okay, 21 and 32 are the age limit, but is age limit relaxable? Yes, it is. For whom? For SCST. It's not for EWS. For OBCs, for ex-servicemen, for, uh, you know, uh, PH candidates. So there are those relaxations which is given and that is given here only. Okay that who all are eligible for relaxation. So on account of you being from some particular category are given some sort of relaxation. Now relaxation can be read from here and there's nothing much to dwell from here. And, and you know, it's, it's very much uh, understandable. But there are crucial notes. There are lots of ex-service civilmen, ex-servicemen uh, ex or ex-military men who ask me this, that whether they're eligible. So for them to become eligible for, for only the category of ex-servicemen, who are ex-servicemen? Ex-servicemen are people who are defined as ex-servicemen in the Re-Employment Civil Services Rules of 1979. So you have to check with these rules whether you are ex-servicemen or not. You cannot blindly say that, yes, you are ex-servicemen because on the account of working. Because there is some condition, you know, which is uh, explained in Re-Employment of Civil Services and Post Rules. That yes, you have to be serving as you know on these many posts for these many years. Then only you become eligible. Another thing, if you are a PH candidate and an SC candidate and an ST candidate and an OBC candidate, I am saying and both, then you will be eligible for cumulative age relaxation for both the categories. It will get accumulated and you will be cumulatively uh, getting the age relaxation. So these two are points with regards to only and only PH candidates and ex-servicemen. Okay, so let's move ahead. Then there is one very, very common doubt with regards to that, okay, age limit is this, this is the age limit, but how should I ascertain and what should be the proof of date of birth with regards to UPSC's exam? Okay, so with regards to UPSC's exam, what shall be the date of birth? Again, it is clearly mentioned. The date of birth accepted by the commission, by commission it means UPSC, is that as entered in matriculation or secondary school leaving certificate. So in the school leaving certificate or in a certificate recognized by Indian University as equivalent to matriculation. So sometimes in few of the states, uh, there are those degrees or diplomas given which are equivalent to matriculation. In there, are, there is no matriculation as such. So matriculation or secondary school leaving certificate is the proof or else Indian University giving an equivalent certificate or in an extract from register of matriculates maintained by university, then also it can be the certificate in support of the date of birth is required to be submitted at the time of applying for civil services mains exam, at the time of mains exam. 
नो अदर डॉक्यूमेंट हॉरस्कोप एफिडेविट बर्थ एक्सट्रैक्ट फ्रॉम प्रिंसिपल कॉर्पोरेशन बर्थ सर्टिफिकेट एक्सेट्रा इज एक्सेप्टेड नो नथिंग नथिंग ऑफ दैट सॉर्ट इज एक्सेप्टेड इट्स ओनली द स्कूल लिविंग सर्टिफिकेट और टेंथ मार्कशीट राइट अंडरस्टूड सो फॉर एज एलिजिबिलिटी वॉट इज टू बी टेकन हाउ योर प्रूफ इज टेकन the certificate the school living certificate matriculation or secondary is accepted by the commission and nothing else no affidavit birth extract from municipal corporation or scopes etc no 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 that is not accepted got it now candidate should note that only date of birth is recorded in matriculation or secondary school living certificate or in an equivalent certificate by the university should be issued prior to the date of submission of application okay there should not be any request of change will be considered or granted no so whatever proof you give shall only be at the date of submission of application at the pre stage okay then date of birth has been submitted by them in the application form and entered in the records for the commission's records also okay can can it be changed can it be altered no no change will be allowed subsequently so whatever whatever age you will write here and whatever proof you give will become part of record suppose you get selected now that shall be the age for all the promotions etc that will remain in the record that's it you cannot change that so it has to be very very carefully given carefully put right it cannot be a casual 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 affair right but in rule 53 there is an exception which is given rule 53 what is that exception that suppose there is an inadvertent error unintentional typographical error by the candidate in indicating the date of birth in the application form then you can make a request of rectification but how you'll have to give a supporting document as specified in rule 53 which is nothing but matriculation matriculation or secondary school leaving certificate school leaving certificate right so if there is an inadvertent uh, error yes you can rectify but then you need to give the proof and you need also tell we'll have to tell why it was so all the communication in this regard should contain these six things valid and active email id complete postal address don't change your email ids name of the candidate roll number registration etc 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 now uh, lots of people ask that uh, which degrees are you know uh, after passing which degrees of graduation they are eligible or not so candidate must hold a graduate degree can be btech can be br can be ba can be mbbs can be a diploma no so a graduate degree of a university incorporated by the act of either central or state legislature in india or other educational institutions established by an act of parliament okay and deemed university under section 3 of university ugc commission so you must have this and this particular bachelor's degree okay hum desi bhasha mein in common common language we use the word bachelor degree but basically it is what graduate degree is what is required okay there is a special note given here what is the note note is that candidate who have appeared at a qualifying exam so suppose you are in your final year and you have appeared for the qualifying exam and the passing of which would render you educationally uh, qualified but you have not be informed of the result uh, then will you be eligible yes you will be eligible so if you have appeared at the qualifying exam qualifying exam for passing the degree or graduate then you shall be eligible all candidates who are declared qualified by the uh, by the commission at the main stage will be required to produce proof of passing the qualifying exam so you must have some sort of proof of passing the final semester passing the degree at main stage so even at pre stage if you are giving in the you are in the final year yes you can give the exam no problem okay and candidates possessing professional and technical qualifications which are required you know recognized by government uh, would also be eligible for admissions so not only the graduate degree but ca ca is eligible so there are certain professional and technical qualifications which are recognized by the government as equivalent okay will be also eligible because those professional and technical qualifications are recognized as professional or technical degrees so that is also eligible okay candidates who have passed the final professional mbbs or any other equivalent professional exam 
leading to a medical degree or certificate but not have completed their internships by the time of mains will be provisionally admitted in the civil services okay so you can be provisionally admitted so this is with regards to degree okay number of attempts you know, you, you know every category must know every student must know and must be aware that to which category he or she belongs to okay so category to which you belong scst has unlimited obc has nine pwd category has nine for general ews obc and unlimited for scst right because that will be cumulative so that is how the attempts are now uh, i don't think restrictions is much major problem here uh, even the medical conditions and all can be tested and you can come to know but so now we can come to directly come to this the reservations the so called most queries are there in reservations only right uh, there are some benchmark disabilities okay it is specifically given here in 2.2 if you can read what are benchmark disabilities so these above four are benchmark disability and fifth says what multiple disabilities from amongst the persons from a to d including deaf blindness then what what is the criteria that it should be 40% now what happens at times that people just get the medical certificate and at the local level uh, it's not tested it's not you know uh, uh, given with uh, deeper inquiry and post selection which is what i have observed post selection what happens that sometimes the certificates uh, get scrutinized and uh, you go for a medical board and the quantum of uh, the, the degree of disability is not found to be uh, which is desired as 40%. So then there lies a problem. Okay. So you should avoid that. You should be a little serious about it. Uh, otherwise, then there is a problem. About adjustment against unreserved seats. If a person is uh, having a certificate of disability by the competent authority, then what happens? Uh, is he, uh, can he be converted to uh, non-reserved? Uh, until now, there was recently a case in Supreme Court and now he can be converted, but still uh, the departments are not implementing that. So I'll, I'm having a word of caution here because I know a few cases still pending. Uh, ideally, they should be converted. That is my opinion. Uh, even a verdict has come, but the order is not getting implemented properly. Justice Ajay Rastogi's order was there. Now he is retired, a Supreme Court judge. He gave a detailed order that because disabled person takes extra time and scribe etc so earlier that was considered as a concession and he was not converted so should that be considered as a concession or not should he be converted or not according to me he should be converted because that is just bringing him to the equal footing uh, him or her okay so uh, th that law has been settled by supreme court but still those guidelines has to come that om has to come so it's an evolving story hence i'll not further comment on this aspect alone so except that in ph there is nothing much right now <clears throat> the most uh, you know uh, the two most common uh, questions people have is, is in ews and obc ews got implemented through uh, a particular om issued uh, in 31st january and uh, this is the om now uh, with regards to ews what is the criteria? So criteria is given as uh, 0.4 in this uh, OM. What is the criteria? People who are not covered in the scheme of reservation, existing scheme of reservation of SC, ST, OBC. That means your, your caste should not come under scheduled caste, scheduled tribe and central list of OBC, central list. If it is in the state list, then you can fall under, you can get the EWS benefit also if you want. Okay. So these three, if you are SC, then you will not be you know, uh, eligible for EWS. If you are ST, not be eligible for EWS. You are in, your caste is in the central list of OBC, then you will not be eligible for EWS. Okay. Then what is the criteria with regards to income and asset? Criteria is gross annual income. Now, gross annual income means what? It means income, you know, all income passing. Now, what happens is we give ITR, we don't, you know, uh, we don't go much deep into, uh, you know, ITR. And sometimes what happens in ITR, it's a complex thing. In ITR, the income is accruing through various means. And in the last, it is written gross total income. Suppose there is a rental income. Suppose there is an exemption. I will suggest that your income purely, you know, even pre-tax should be under it. 
because what happens is it creates confusion sometimes somebody might father might red get retired in that one year his income is more because he is getting the retiral benefits now there have been such cases there have been such cases and people have some sometimes what happens is somebody might have taken loan in that particular year no uh, you know dopt uh, or or any so to say or any other department uh, while verifying dopt in the case of uh, civil services might take a uh, contrarian view though and according to, according to me that is also not a very right opinion but that is how the department has been functioning and sometimes uh, there is uh, i have i i i rather would have avoided saying it but i have seen uh, and uh, there are proofs that there has been inconsistency uh, with regards to implementation and application of rules by a very coveted department which is dopt but that is how it is so sometimes stand changes with uh, the person sitting on the seat so that is a sad story but yes so uh, you know there can be problem when it comes to ews that uh, a person getting bounty full income in one year will make him you know ineligible also in certificate you know in in the certificates which are given by the authority sometimes the year is not written clearly year uh, annual year should be very very clearly mentioned of which annual year okay and it should be given by completely clearly tehsildar or above it should not be of nayab tehsildar and all there is a post in north india called nayab tehsildar uh, you know it should be of you know there is a om that who all are competent authority sdm and all everybody about tehsildar and dm are the competent authority signature must be properly signed you know it should not be a flimsy signature so all that also has to be taken care of but okay coming back on uh, what is ews so 8 lakh limit now 8 lakh includes everything salary agriculture business profession everything okay and for the financial year prior to the year of application prior to the year of application financial year prior to the year of application now here lies some sort of i mean you know mindful application what 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 is required how will we calculate financial year prior to the application so year of application sometimes uh, what happens is application uh, the civil service notification might come before 31st march or beyond 31st march if it is beyond 31st march then the last fiscal year will be calculated if it is pre 31st march then a year back shall be calculated you are understanding the point so it is financial year prior to the application okay then what what else up with uh, apart from income uh, income is from all sources agriculture business salary it shouldn't be above 8 lakh and whose income income of family then definition of family is also there okay the family will uh, include the person yes his or her parents yes you can read 4.3 okay uh, and siblings below the age of 18 yes his or her spouse yes children below the age of 18 yes so spouse children and sibling below 18 mother father her his and her parents not grandparents yes not uncles not other relatives nothing so family will include parents siblings below 18 children below 18 if any spouse and your own income so your own income is calculated in ews while and your spouse's income is also calculated in ews while in obc that is not the case so that's a slight distinction here also what is the criteria with regards to assets so you should not hold you should not hold 5 acres of land and above residential flat of 1000 square feet and above now how will you calculate 1000 square feet so nobody is doing a very very strict uh, analysis but largely it should not be in registered and in registry of the particular flat it should not be a 1000 square feet if it's an unregistered flat of private society then also it should uh, be mentioned that it is below 1000 square feet now how to calculate 1000 square feet because there is carpet area there, there are various sorts of ways to calculate so on that uh, until now there is no clarity there is, it's not that strict also by the way uh, you know but largely it should be below this criteria then what then residential plot of 100 square yard and above in notified municipalities so it's only the notified municipality if your particular plot is outside the notified municipality then it's okay then it can be of 200 square yard ठीक है, so that is how it is. so these uh, these are assets and this is the income thing. then the certificate should be given 
uh, if you read the third point, revenue officer not below the rank of Tesilda. So these are the competent authorities uh, who should give the certificate and it should be strictly followed. Okay. It can be SDO, it can be revenue officer, not below not below uh, the rank of Tessildar. So NAB Tessildar certificate will not be eligible. Why? Because there will be, you know, question mark on that certificate. The officer who issues the certificate would do the same after carefully verifying. And 5.3 also says uh, that crucial date for submitting uh, will be the closing date of receipt of application. So this is written in the AWS certificate because that's a general rule. With regards to uh, our civil service exam, there, there is a closure date and that should act as the date of cutoff date, cutoff date for eligibility. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, I guess that sums up uh, almost everything. Uh, I've told you very, very clearly. Now, there are people who don't have income proofs. So they'll have to come with the income certificate uh, or else it'll act on uh, self-declaration. Uh, Otherwise, if people who are filling ITR, that's the best. But in ITR, I am telling you very, very clearly, remarking you, it, even pre-tax, it should be less than uh, 8 lakh, clearly. Because then there can be sometimes issues. What happens is if the income is on the boundary, uh, then there are problems. There is another factor. Uh, suppose the property held by family is in different locations or different places, cities. Will it be clubbed? Yes, it will be clubbed while applying the criteria. So suppose there is one land here in some city in another state and some village and all shall be clubbed. All shall be clubbed for the purposes of EWS. Okay. So uh, UPT had issued the FAQs and uh, if the land and property, so there are clear-cut questions, FAQs. And on, on the basis of that, you can make out whether you will be eligible or not. Uh, it is written that, okay, what will be family? Who will issue the certificate in case of agriculture land, residential flat, plot, plot of parents. So what all I've explained is been again asked in question format and it has been reiterated. So FAQ is, is not something great. Our grandparents part of family? No. So uh, it speaks of residential property. However, exclusion of commercial property will result in injustice. Hence, the definition of residential flat or plot in the OM also includes commercial property. So, will it include commercial property? Yes. Ideally, yes. But again, practically, sometimes nobody checks. So, it includes all the property. Though the word uh, written in the OAM is only residential property. Now, uh, this particular FAQ is also issued by DOPD. Whether it's challengeable, whether it's right interpretation or not. Yes, it, it is challengeable, but we are not here to challenge. We are here to just uh, kind of see whether we are eligible and uh, go through the exam. Uh, if somebody wants to challenge, yes, you can. Because it's clearly mentioned what is residential plot. What is residential plot? For the purpose of construction of residential house only. That shall be the residential plot. And it, it shall be the entire area of the plot. You cannot say, okay, I'll leave that area and the boundary wall and all of that. So these are the FAQs also which is given. You can just Google or and go for FAQs and uh, you'll find it. <clears throat> will monthly pension will be counted? Yes, pension shall be counted. So, uh, suppose gross salary is 10 lakh, but as per income tax return, total income comes out to 6 lakh. Well, what will be there? It is always gross salary or income. Hence, I was saying pre-tax, right? So, once I said pre-tax, it includes, you know, all these kind of FAQs. Nayab Tessildar is a competent authority? No. Nobody below Tessildar. So, basically, I had covered in the explanation, but still you can, for uh, furthermore clarity, you can go for uh, the FAQs as well. Now, with regards to OBC, uh, there you you to qualify for central civil services or any central university or an exam or job or whatsoever, your caste has to be in the central list. You can from where you can check whether your caste is in the central list or not from NCBC's website, National Commission of Backward Class. So first, your caste should be there. Once your caste is there, for EWS it was different. EWS it was. That your cast should not be this, should not be that, should not be that. Okay. For OBC, it is different. OBC, there are identified castes. So your cast should be falling in the central list. That is the first uh, measure. Then once that is there, now you have to check whether you fall in creamy layer or non-creamy layer. Non-creamy layer uh, means back, uh, you know, remaining backwards. Creamy layer is a loosely coined word for socially advanced persons. 
Now, this came out with a report and I, we, me and Avijit sir already have a very long video which covers almost everything. But still, secondly, I'll again go through it, you know, I'll let you know. Uh, though this time I'm making it uh, very uh, objectively restricted to the eligibility and not, uh, uh, I'm not giving the reasoning and the history and geography of how OBC resolution came about and all of that, the rationale, the changes, the problems. I'm restricting myself to the, you know, what creamy layer is, that's it. <clears throat> so, uh, one disclaimer that there are few cases which are pending, first of all. And there are few interpretations which are unclear. Okay. Even government stand is unclear on few things. Hence, there is all the more confusion. But for few categories, it's very, very clear. For people who are uh, who have held high post, high constitutional post, uh, now the, 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 the term is high constitutional post. It's not normal constitutional post. President, vice president, etc. Their sons and daughters uh, will be not eligible, will be falling in three meal there. So, which is socially advanced. So even if you are of that particular caste, you will not be eligible for OBC reservation. Now this 1993 OM has a schedule. It describes the category. It tells who shall, uh, to whom the rule of exclusion shall apply, which is column three. Okay. So uh, then there comes a category where your parents are working as government servants, either state or center. Uh, now in, in, in this particular category, uh, it, it's very much clear when your parents are working in government. Now, a lot of people get, get confused what government is after all. Uh, is a PSU government? No, it is not. Uh, it might be government for the purposes of Article 12 definition, but for the purpose of OBC reservation, it is not the same. So here, it should be strictly, strictly government. State government and central government. Okay. It can't be PSU. It can't be autonomous body. It can't be a board. It can't be a trust. It can't be a university. It can't be a, uh, you know... Uh, uh, government financial company or a bank, a PSU bank, etc. It has to be government. Now, here the rule is very clear that if your father enters as directly class one, direct means what? He was directly recruited. Your mother, your father or either of them. Then you are not eligible. Because obviously you were in a high service so you are socially advanced. Then, then comes what? Suppose your father and mother entered class B. If both entered class B, you are out. You are again creepy there. But if one of them entered class B and uh, he or she didn't become class 1 before 40, then yes, uh, you shall be eligible. Okay. What about class 3 and 4? If they enter directly as class 3 and 4, even if they become 1 before 40, you are eligible. So that's very, very clear. Okay. Then comes a category called 2C, which is uh, all the people whose parents are working in banks, insurance, and all of these. There lies the biggest confusion because the idea was that there shall be uh, equivalent uh, study done and all of that. But that has not happened, partly happened, happened in few places. So in central government, if your parents are working in banks, etc., there was some sort of equivalence which has happened. Okay. What, what is the equivalence? All people whose father or mother entered as clerk and peons and became even manager before 40 will be eligible but all those parents who's, who you know who entered as suppose bank PO and probationary officers etc or at GM GS scale one they shall not be eligible their salary shall be counted and salary normally is above eight lakh okay with regards to uh, uh, the the central PSUs also there is some sort of equivalence drawn now what is the equivalence it says that if a father and mother are working in non executive post as of now today. In, in a techni technician, you know, workman, etc., which is non-executive post, identified non-executive post, then salary shall not be counted. If uh, they are working as executive, then salary will be counted. Now, 93 doesn't speak of salary to be counted, but somehow some sort of equivalences and other OMs have come and because only to this category they are counting salary. Otherwise, salary is not even a criteria. Now, on this, there is a litigation which is pending. Uh, there have been reports, a parliamentary report, a NCBC report, uh, you know, what not. And somehow I've been part of, uh, you know, uh, representing uh, in front of even a parliamentary committee and all of that. But the case is pending in high courts. A uh, few of the high courts have given favor. Rather, every high court, every uh, cat has also given in favor. Case is pending in Supreme Court. There is no iota of doubt to me and to anybody that salary was never a criteria. It is not a criteria. 
even if equivalence is not done it cannot be the criteria but i should also tell what is practically happening and uh, post equivalence also in few of the categories they are counting salary and post equivalence in few of the categories they are not counting salary with regards to state state government state psus etc there is no clarity uh, whether equivalence is there or not usually it is the state government which should have the verdict in their hand if state government says that there is equivalence then yes it should be considered now what about private uh, in private also dopt's interpretation is that we will count salary uh, though ideally it should not be the case so because of this there is confusion in other categories there is no confusion whatsoever if your parents were working in paramilitary forces and armed forces if they were working in a rank above colonel and equivalent in air force navy etc then uh, if they were above then you will be not eligible if they were below then you will be eligible it's clear there is no confusion whatsoever in professional category your income shall be seen because your status cannot be adjusted there is no status of you know whether you are a big shop owner or a small shop owner so it's the income which makes you the you know the shop owner so only the income shall be seen that's it it's clear there is no confusion in business in profession your ca lawyers the parents who are ca parents who are lawyers parents who are owning shops parents who are doing trading parents who are doing business income shall be seen in agricultural land whether the income is seen no it is only the land holding which is seen which is a little tricky but not that tricky uh, it's very very high uh, there are ceiling limits in various states so it's only the ceiling limit which is tested and nothing else what ceiling limit that your irrigated land should be equal to more or more than 85% of said subsidy or both the irrigated and non irrigated should be above okay now how to test that you should google 93 om go through it see whether your ceiling limit of your state uh, google your ceiling limit of your state and find out by yourself that is the way you should do it uh then in the income and wealth test it's clearly mentioned that people who are having income 1 lakh now the limit is 8 lakh because the income keeps getting revised though it has not got re re revised since 2017 it ideally should be revised in every 3 years uh oh, so scbcs or obcs can feel bad about it but you know that is how it is uh, so it's written 1 lakh but limit is 8 lakh today there is a mention of well tax act also well tax act people don't test now by people i mean the competent authorities or you know the agencies why because well tax act was abolished by mr jetly uh, it cannot be seen now uh, it cannot be tested so there is no point going on well tax act uh, it's clearly mentioned that income from salaries or agriculture land shall not be clubbed in the income above which means that agriculture income or salary income are not the criteria uh, and uh, then uh, one other major confusion of lot of people is please read the explanation too the income criteria has to be uh, revised 3 years and oh sorry sorry so sorry so please read the uh, the point 6a that the income has to be above for all 3 years consecutively uh, because then only it will make you cream then only it will make you socially advanced so consecutively it should be above so all the 3 years it should be 8 8 8 last 3 years preceding 3 years uh, do you have to make certificate every year no you should have you should renew the certificate because the set of 3 years changes every fiscal year there will be one more year which will be added so hence uh, a fresher certificate should be made yes it should be made also the cut off date of exam requires the certificate so obc certificate there is a format you only have to uh, it, it mentions that your caste is there or not central list plus it says that are you eligible for obc non criminal as per this om and as per the revised incomes revised income limits okay that's it so that is how it is uh, basically uh, the income limit now stands as 8 lakh income limit includes income from all sources except income from agriculture and salary but for few categories there is a confusion there is pending litigation only in those categories salary is getting counted practically by dopt Uh, for all other exams nobody is even you know vouching nobody is even verifying and there is a confusion yes there is a confusion now a lot of people ask me oh my god there is a confusion you know for obc reservation at this stage fortunately or unfortunately it is the case that is how it is that is how it is there is a pending litigation yes it is okay otherwise as per 93 salary is not a criteria agriculture income is not a criteria 
and to make you creamy layer, your income should be above for all three years. Well, tax act stands abolished. Nobody is, you know, checking that. So I guess uh, I have summed up. Secondly, for further details or greater details and reasoning, you can watch my and Abhijit sir's uh, video where we talk all about OBC reservation. And the, I, I guess the thumbnail or the heading or the title of the video is that only. You can search for it on our channel itself. So uh, SCST reservation scheme for any certificate date. The notification, uh, the date should be before the cutoff date, right? Then you have to somehow apply your aptitude and see to it that uh, the certificate, suppose uh, suppose the cutoff date is before 31st March, then you have to go, beyond, you know, three years previous to the that particular year or that particular date, right? Suppose it is 28th March, okay? X year, suppose it is 2010. Now that rear is still running. So you have to go for year 6, 7, 7, 8, 8, 9. 9, 10 is still running. Understand? So it's a little tricky in terms of the year, but yes. So the best way to, easier way to understand is make the OBC certificate every year. Renew it. Simple. Don't take the risk. So this is the FAQ by UPSC only. So uh, on rules, etc., few of the OMs about EWS and OBC has been issued by DOPT. So ideally, the nodal ministry is MSG, which governs the rules of all the reservations. Uh, for SCST and PWD, uh, it's DOPT hasn't issued much OMs. You know, there are only few, uh, and few OMs have been also been issued by UPSC. <clears throat> so, with regards to SCST, reservation is made for the candidates belonging to SCST in various categories. Okay, but SCST lists. Suppose you are SC from a state, so you will remain SC of that state only. So for central government, yes, you can give. But uh, if you go to that other state and there is a SC vacancy, then, then you will not be eligible. Okay. Uh, except that uh, it's pretty simple with SCST because uh, usually the caste don't change. Some caste can get added until now no caste has changed as such. So it's pretty simple. Okay. Now, if you are an SCST candidate and you're selected on your own merit, will you be converted? Yes, you shall be converted. The certificate has to not to be renewed again and again, but it has to be issued by the competent authority. Okay. Uh, competent authority will not include rank below Tessildar. So, Nayab Tessildar certificates are basically invalid. So, don't go for those certificates. Uh, it should be above Tessildar, SDM, or collector. Uh, <clears throat> so, cutoff date for SCST uh, should be date prior to the closing date and should not be very, very old also. That's it. So, suppose there is a cutoff date of the exam. The certificate should be just before that cutoff date. Can be made in two, three years. But there is no need as such to make it, to renew it, because it's it's not based on income criteria. It's not financially independent. Uh, SCST certificate is financially independent. There's no impact of income earned or not, right? So there is that stability. Except that uh, there's uh, if there is a migration and all, so on that also there has been OMS issued that uh, you will be called the SC. Suppose you were SC, uh, your, your father was uh, belonging to a particular caste of SC or ST in a pale state, and you migrated to B state. Then B state officers can also issue the OM, or, or rather the certificate, uh, not the OM, so sorry, uh, rather a certificate on the basis if you give proper documents. But you will be called SCST of A state only. That's it. Uh, this aparts, uh, there is not much controversy with regards to SCST. There, there are controversies with regards to few castes, whether they will be SC or ST or that's an individual doubt. That's not a generic doubt, so to say. Right?